Hello, good to see you here. This is Olivia from the LiveChat Developer Program team. If you are watching this video, you are probably interested in the app authorization and perhaps you are also a little bit skeptical about the complexity of this process. If I guessed that right, I'm here to show you that it really is as simple as it can be, and I'll take you through all the way through the entire agent authorization process. Understanding this flow will allow you to communicate with our API from the agent side, and with that build private apps and applications for our marketplace. First up, you have to make sure you have an account in the LiveChat Developer Console. To begin with the agent authorization, we will need to create an application in the Developer Console that handles this type of request in its authorization building block. What would you need such an authorization building block for, you may ask? So one thing is that inside of this block, we specify the redirect URIs that are authorized to process our authorization and return a token but also we will get the necessary information, such as the client ID and the client secret, that allows us to complete the authorization process entirely. So let's head to the apps section and configure that. Alright, and this is going to be super simple. What I recommend before you get started is to open some sort of a notepad app, like you will see me do just now, and copy all the information you will need later into a separate note to have them on hand all in one place. First, we need to create and name our application. Then we will add the mentioned app authorization building block. First, we choose the type of app we would like to build. What you need to note here is that if you choose the web app option, you will be only able to complete the implicit grant authorization type. For the presentation purposes, we will select the server side app setting, which works well with both types of the available authorization. As soon as we have this, we see a bunch of information, some IDs and even a warning. What is all that? The client ID is a unique identifier of this exact created app, and so is the client secret. However, this one is also confidential. We will need both of these to complete the authorization process, so I will save them to my notepad. As for the client secret, note that you will see it just this once in the console, so you should save it in a safe place to be able to use it later. If you would happen to lose your client secret, you can always generate a new one, but note that if the app you build already uses the client secret for its authorization process, you will need to adjust the authorization handling appropriately. Next up we have the redirect URI whitelist. Redirect URI is the address of your app that will receive your access token in the URL, and it's also where the user will be redirected by your OAuth server after the successful authorization. Here I whitelist a static URL for the presentation purposes, so I will be able to grab the authorization token by hand from the website URL. After that it's time to define scopes our app will have access to. In here you can add all scopes necessary for your access token to have in order to call specific methods and endpoints from our APIs. You will find the scopes required for all calls in our documentation. In this video we will use our token to call the list archives method which returns the archives data from our live chat license, so we will add the scopes appropriate for that. And that's all we need for the authorization block. The rest is really like a walk in the park and you will see that in just a moment. In this video we will tackle both types of available agent authorization flows, the implicit grant authorization and the authorization code grant flow. We will start with the former, so let's head to the docs and see what's next for us. As you can see, we already completed step 1, so we will head straight to step 2, where we need to obtain the access token by redirection to the live chat out server. We can do this manually, so let's copy the URL and replace the sample information with our own details we got from the authorization building block, and that is our client ID and the redirect URI. Optionally, we can input a state, which is any value useful for you as a developer, that will be assigned to our token. As soon as we do this, we can use our browser to send the authorization request to the OAuth server. Since I use a static page, my website address didn't change, and as you can see, my access token and the scopes I assigned to my app are visible in the URL, along with the token expiration time. And that's it! Now we will need to simply grab the code, replace the UTF encoded character to a colon, and we can use this token in our requests. Right now I'll use Postman and open the live chat API collections to find the list archives method. You can fetch our collections from the docs as well, but if you prefer you can also manually import a sample request from the docs to your Postman. 
Now I will simply replace the value in the authorization to my access token and send the request. As you can see it all worked perfectly fine and the server returned the archives from my license. If you'd like to check out a code sample for this type of authorization, you can also find it in our documentation under the implicit grant out steps. Alright, as promised, we will also go through the second type of authorization available for the agent auth, and that's the authorization code grant. It's very similar to the implicit grant authorization, but requires one extra step along the way to obtain the access token. The difference between the two is that we do not receive an access token just after we get redirected to the auth server. In the authorization code grant, we receive a code, which we exchange for a token in the next step. Ok, so let's grab the authorization URL from the docs and follow through next steps. This authorization URL might seem the same, but it differs with the response type we define. In the authorization code grant, we request a code, which we will later exchange for a token. The rest of the URL stays the same as before, so I will just replace the response type parameter and send the authorization request in my browser. Alright, and here we have the OAU server returning us a code in the URL. Let's grab this code and check in the docs how we can exchange it for a token. Ok, so we will need to send another request to our accounts API with a couple of different parameters. I already have this request prepared in my postman, so I will just replace the details with my own and send the request with my obtained code. And here we have it! With the authorization code grant, you also receive a refresh token. This authorization method is beneficial since you can request a new access token using the refresh token, without having to obtain a new code. This way you will keep the continuity of authorization server side, without having the user to authenticate multiple times. To receive a new token using the refresh token, you will need to send another request to our API, which you can find in our authorization docs. I also prepared this in my postman beforehand, so as you can see, this request has a refresh token as the grant type parameter, but also requires our client ID and secret. And since you use the refresh token to obtain a new access token, you will need to also include this as a parameter in this request. And that's it! Our access token remains valid for 8 hours. So I don't need to request another one before that, but when I'll be getting close to the expiration time, I can simply send another request with my refresh token to get a new access token. Replacing the old access token with the new one will keep the user continuously authorized along the way. We can also use the access token just the same way as we did with the token from the implicit grant authorization, as it has the same scopes assigned. So we can just call the list archives method to receive the same response. And that's all for today! I declared it will be an easy journey and hopefully you find it as simple as I do. Now all you need to do is to pack this into your code and use it in your application. If you have any questions, be sure to send us an email or drop us a chat. Until then, have a good one!